okay so hello welcome back now the next question here now all of these questions are basically this the exact same thing as we discussed before essentially you have a you have a function over here unless the question is really different but it's it's really a function over here and then you want to find essentially for example the the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at this point and this function f has some relationship some f of x essentially uh, it's either the square root of x or the or x squared or x cubed or whatever that might be and you want to find the slope of the line the slope of this line tangent to the graph of the function at some point a and then based on that and based on the coordinates of this point you want to write the equation of the line so that's all that you do in all of these exercises so which means that basically if you have understood the, the basic concept of the derivative and uh, if you know how to take a limit um, uh, and um, if you if you know how to take a limit and if you know basic algebra uh, i mean normal algebra essentially algebra that that uh, that that involves x and y and z and so on and so forth um, you can solve all of these problems i mean this is the there is no problem with with solving any of these problems but um, now i since i i um, I have a couple of things to do in this text, um, meaning that um, I, I, I actually I, I have planned to do a couple of things in this text, so I have to go through the whole text essentially and then somehow change it in some ways. So for the same reason I do go, I will go through all of the exercises, okay? But otherwise, it's the, the exact same story over and over again. You have a function f, you, you want to find the slope of this line, and then based on that, write the equation of the line. And it just simply needs simple uh, simple algebra, nothing, nothing more than that. So let's take a, take a look at the, the next question, which is question number 10 which is you want to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve y is equal to 1 over square root of x at the point at x is equal to a you want to find the slope of the tangent line at this point and then find the equations of the of the tangent lines at the points this is part a Part B, you want to find the equation of the tangent lines at the points 1, 1 and 4, 1 half. And then graph the curve and both tangents on the common screen. So C, you want to graph the, graph the function, right? So that's simple question. So you know that basically, so again the, the, the exact same thing you want to calculate m is equal to f prime of a which is the same thing as the limit of basic the f of the limit of basic the f of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right Next, what you want to do is that f of a plus h, you want to calculate f of a plus h um, and f of a here. So f of a plus h would be the same thing as 1 over the square root of a plus h, right? And f of a would be the same thing as basically 1 over the square root of a, right? And the rest is just... Uh, you don't need to do anything about about the rest so then you can calculate essentially m prime m is equal to f prime of a is equal to the limit of basic the f of a plus h which is 1 over the square root of a plus h minus f of a 1 over the square root of a 
uh, over h as h approaches zero, right? Um, now you want to add these together. If you want, if you were to add these together, you would write it as one over the square root of a plus h minus one over the square root of a would be the same thing as um, the square root of a, the square root of a plus h. And then over here you would have the square root of a minus the square root of h, the square root of a plus h. And then, and then, well, you would write this as, and then if you divide this by, if you divide this whole thing by h, you would divide this also by h, which would be this times the reciprocal of this, which one, which means that a h essentially goes to the to the denominator, becomes becomes essentially this whole thing, uh, essentially the square root of a minus the square root of a plus h over h times square root of a square root of a plus h, right? So this is essentially the simplified version of your your fraction. Now, since you want it, you want to eventually cancel this h out because h in the denominator, if it goes to zero, you cannot take the limit. So then, what you will do is that you will take, you will rationalize the numerator, meaning that you can write this as the square root of a minus the square root of a plus h and multiply it by its conjugate which is the square root of a plus the square root of a plus h and the denominator becomes h square root of a square root of a plus h multiplied by the same thing that you multiplied by the numerator which is the square root of a plus the square root of a plus h and uh, well uh, this is a squared mi a, a minus b times a, a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared, which is the same thing as a squared would be this the square root of a whole squared, which is equal to a minus b squared, which is a plus h, um, which is the same thing as eventually it becomes a minus a minus h. So the numerator becomes this, and the denominator becomes h times the square root of a times the square root of a plus h times the square root of a plus the square root of a plus h, right? Of course, here you cannot, this, this whole thing becomes a negative h. Uh, and you cannot cancel the h's out because um, it would be changing the function um, in ways you, you you don't know in ways there is no way to 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 expect what's going to happen to the function but then in the limit as h approaches zero since h is not equal to zero it's only approaching zero you can can't you can essentially cancel these two out meaning that you can write this as you can write this as the limit of basically um, negative h, negative h over h times the square root of a times the square root of a plus h times the square root of a plus the square root of a plus h as h approaches zero. Now as h approaches zero, since h is not equal to zero, you can cancel out the cancel out the h and h over here, right? Now, as h approaches zero, this becomes basically this becomes essentially negative one, the square root of a times the square root of a times basically the square root of a plus the square root of a which is the same thing as basically negative 1, the square root of a times the square root of a is equal to a, and the square root of times 2 times the square root of a, right? 
which is the same thing as negative 1 over 2a square root of a. square root of a so you can keep it as as essentially as this expression over here negative 1 over 2a square root of a negative 1 over 2a square root of a that's essentially the slope of the line and again you can see that this comes out as as, as essentially as some number which is only dependent on a right meaning that by changing the value of a you can calculate the um, the slope of the line at different points right now since you want to calculate the uh, the, uh, the the slope of the the, the 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 equation of the line at one comma one you want to calculate the equation of the line essentially the tangent line at 1 comma 1 you need essentially the slope of the line at 1 comma 1 which means that a is equal to 1 so f prime of 1 would be equal to negative 1 over base 62 times 1 is equal to 2 the square root of 1 is equal to 1 so that's negative 1 half and you know that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? Now the point is basically 1 comma 1. So you can write the, the equation of the line as y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 1, which means that y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half x plus 1 half, and y is equal to negative one half x. One half plus one is equal to three halves, right? So that's the equation of your of your line at at basically at one comma one. So I erase all of these. I just simply write the equation over here. So that's y is equal to negative one half x plus three halves. Now the equation of the line. The equation of the tangent line of the tangent line at this point, which is one four comma one half, four comma one half, you need to, to find the, the slope of the line at this point. So and a is equal to four essentially here. So f prime of four is the same thing as negative one over two times. 2 times a which is 8 times the square root of 4 the square root of 4 is equal to 2 2 times 8 is equal to 16 that's negative 1 16th again you can write y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 so y minus y1 is equal to m negative 1 over 16 times x minus x1 which is equal to 4 and so y minus y minus one half is the same thing as negative one sixteenth x. Negative into negative is positive four sixteenths equal to one fourth. Positive one fourth. So y is equal to negative one sixteenth x, and then one fourth plus one half is the same thing as um, I I think it's three fourths if I'm not mistaken. One fourth plus one half is three-fourths I suppose right one-fourths plus one-half is the same thing as four one plus two two that's three-fourths that's plus three-fourths so so the equation of the line becomes becomes this equation so that's y is equal to negative one sixteenth x plus three fourths. So now let's take a look at the graph of the function. One over the square root of x is a function that goes essentially 
that goes something like this 1 over square root of x is like a um, is like a um, an exponential decay except that um, except that the y-axis essentially becomes the, the the vertical asymptote for the function right and of course the x-axis is also a horizontal asymptote for the function the two points are 1 comma 1 and 4 comma 1 half so these two points and the lines that we found were these two lines which is y is equal to negative one half one half x plus three halves that's one line and y is equal to negative one sixteenth x plus three fourths And you can see that this is basically tangent to the graph of the function at 1 comma 1 and the other line, this line over here, is tangent to the graph of the function at this point, right? So, so far we have no problems. Question number 11. Question number 11, we have a particle starts by moving to the right along a horizontal line. Let's see what the question is. Okay, so now about this question, this is question number 11. This is question number 11, and the question is a particle starts by moving to the right by moving to the right along a horizontal line. So that means that we have a horizontal line over here, meaning, I suppose, what, what the question means is along a straight line, I suppose. So the particle is, we can imagine that the particle is over here and it starts moving towards the right. And you can see that moving towards the right has been taken as the positive direction because this is the position versus time graph of the of the motion of this of this particle. Now we want to know when is the particle uh, moving to the right? When is it moving? to the right, to the left, and standing still. Right? So you can see that, you can see that basically to, to, to essentially to see the, the motion of this, of this particle, you can see that it goes um, basically um, you go all the way up to three meters so that means that this is zero one two and three meters over here this is three meters and at zero you're at zero yeah right at um, by when the time at, at one second you're at you're at one meter so you've got you've gotten to one meter at so the particle essentially comes over here goes all the way up to essentially to um, to, to excuse me to three meters gets all the way up to three meters after after one second then for essentially for one second the particle is standing still over here meaning that it's not changing the changing its position right it's not changing its position 
then basically after then starting from two seconds all the way up to three seconds it goes back to one meter meaning that it goes it goes basically all the way back to one meter meaning that it ends up over here and it takes basically one second to do that then for a second it's standing still here and then from here it moves to three meters and then again from here it moves all the way up to three meters and this takes basically um, two seconds uh, four to six that's that's two seconds right so that means that the particle essentially goes all the way up to here then for essentially here it stands stands still for a while then goes back to this to this place to this spot over here standing still over here for a while and then goes back finally at this ends up at this at this position right and you can see that it starts at zero at zero which is this position over here and ends up eventually at three meters which is this place over here right so which means that basically you could say that and these are the types of things that you need to be very good at in physics when you when you when you when you study essentially motion in one direction in 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 uh, mechanics and that sort of thing essentially you need to you need to um, in two three dimensions and so on and so forth you need to be um, good at basically f um, reading these graphs which is usually either position versus time or velocity versus time or acceleration versus time you need to be able to understand those graphs properly okay so now basically what that means is that so the that the particle over here is as you can see it is moving towards the right right so it in this in this interval which goes from zero to one second the particle is moving towards the right because it's moving in the positive direction of the of the vertical axis right in this interval over here that goes from one to two seconds the the, the part the essentially the particle is standing still because it's not changing its position the position is three sec three meters and it remains at three meters all the way up to two seconds starting at two seconds it starts moving in the towards the left which is this this choice over here towards the left for one second right and ends up at one meter and then for one second it's standing still again from three seconds to four seconds and from four seconds to six seconds it's again moving towards the right so it's right left and right right and then based on the based on the so this is basically position versus time this is position versus time graph of the of this motion uh, to do the the velocity function to, to, to essentially to do the velocity function um, now to do the velocity function what you can do is that you can see that the velocity is over here is not is not changing because because essentially this is a straight line right since it's a straight line the velocity is not changing it's 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 essentially constant velocity meaning that um, well since essentially since this line is not is not something like this it's exactly something like this it's a straight line and the and the slope of this line essentially tells you about the velocity because velocity is nothing but the rate of change of position versus with respect to time right and you can see that and you can see that the slope of this line is basically um, rise over run i'm just talking about essentially this portion over here the the 
the slope of this line is basically this is three units meaning three meters in basically in one second so that's three meters per second that's your average velocity right um, or another way to calculate the same thing you can take you can calculate the rise of the of the of the line between this point and this point over here so the line goes from 0 to 3 so there is 3 units rise essentially and then there is 1 unit run divided by 1 and then the units would be meters per second that would be th which which would be 3 meters per per second right so that that means that this is an average this is a uh, a, a constant um a constant basic velocity of three meters per second a constant velocity of three meters per second which would be essentially um, so this is basically this would be essentially your velocity over here three meters per second right mm -hmm. Okay, so this is three meters per second all the way up to here, right? Now you can see that over here the position is not changing, which means that the rate of change of position with respect to time is zero, which means that your velocity is zero. So basically your velocity in this interval becomes zero. In this interval you can see that the that the velocity becomes negative because the particle is moving towards the negative essentially it's moving towards negative y's on the y-axis which means that basically you can you, you need to calculate the slope of this line you have basically negative two units rise and basically one unit run so that that's a neg that's a slope of negative two which means that basically that your velocity essentially becomes something like this. So you have this is negative one and negative two, and and um, do this using this color. Um, so this is negative one and negative two, and the exact same units over here. right and so um, so that's negative two meters per second the negative two meters per second so negative two would be essentially for this interval this is negative one and this is negative two so negative two would be essentially this this part over here right excuse me this part over here would be basically this part this part over here which would be negative two meters per second right so that's negative two meters per second this is velocity and i color code this so that you can understand that this is velocity and the and this this graph is the position Next, basically over here, you can see that the position is not changing, which means that your velocity is equal to zero. So again, your velocity goes to zero at, for this interval. And for this interval, your velocity, basically this is two units and this is basically uh, one to three is equal to two. So over here, your velocity is the slope of this line, which is one. So then at this point, your velocity for this interval, your velocity goes to one meter per second. So I did basically, I did graph both of them on the same, on the same coordinate system so that you can see essentially what's, what's, what, what is the meaning of basically a velocity function. And these are all uh, constant velocities, meaning that the velocity is not changing. It's a, velo it's a constant velocity of three meters per second for this interval zero for this interval negative two for this interval zero and basically a positive one for this interval right and one 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 useful thing to do is that to try to understand essentially th this velocity function in terms of this situation 
so that you can use it later on in physics because these are uh, really uh, I mean this is just the I mean all that you would learn in in in, in an introductory physics course really okay okay so that that's all about that okay so the next question is another question which is interesting as um, interesting about something interesting about graphs now here sh essentially shown are graphs of the position functions of two runners uh, runner a and runner b who run a hundred meter race so this is essentially 20 40 60 80 and this is 100 meters this is uh, the, your, your essentially s in meters and this is in seconds and so it seems that they have 2 4 6 8 10 12 and in 14 seconds they have they have both run the a, a distance of 100 meters right but the way that they have run the race essentially as as you can see based on the graph is a little bit different although they have finished at exactly the same time but they have run the race in different manners essentially we will we will see about we will see we will we will see about that now part a of this question you want to describe and compare describe and compare how the runners run the race how the runners run the race right part b is at what time is the distance between the runners the greatest At what time is the distance between the runners the greatest? And part C of the same question is at what time do they have the same velocity? And what time do they have the same velocity? Okay. So you can see that basically that these two runners, as I as I mentioned before, this is thirteen. This is thirteen seconds, and at thirteen seconds, both of the runners have finished the race, right? Meaning that both have 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 essentially both both have run a distance of a hundred meters in thirteen seconds. And uh, so if you want to describe and compare how the runners have essentially have run the race is that you can see that basically that the that that essentially that this is position versus time there is time over here this axis over here is time and this axis over here is position this axis over here is position and uh, and so basically the 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 graph for runner a you can see that it's a straight line right it is a straight line meaning that the runner was uh, was basically the runner is essentially is not is not changing its velocity meaning that for example for in, in in basic in four seconds you can see that in four seconds what the runner is doing from zero seconds to four seconds he goes essentially he or she goes essentially moves a distance of somewhere about basically 30 meters so that's 30 meters for example in in four seconds again from from four seconds to eight seconds he goes from 30 meters to uh, 
to somewhere over here which is basically um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to take this as a straight line or I suppose we will know if we drew a line a straight line over here see what happens I, I would say this is a straight line okay from basically from four seconds to eight seconds he he or she goes from from basically from uh, basically this is 20 30 that's a 20 meters all the way up to let's say 70 meters right this this would be a basically this is 20 this is 40 this is 60 and it goes from 30 to 60 that's about 30 meters give or take so again 30 meters in another in another four seconds and does the same thing over and over again right so that means that the rate at which the rate at which he's changing his position he's not changing he's not he's not changing that that rate meaning that he's in simple words meaning in simple words he's he's essentially running at the same pace starting from zero seconds all the way up to 13 seconds he has kept the same pace meaning that he's not changing his velocity velocity is the same but 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 then the other runner that the other runner that 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 that, that runs with the race what what he or she is doing let's call it a she she is in the beginning he is going a little bit slower right meaning that how 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 fast is going you can you can know essentially based on the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at this point which is this line over here when he gets when she gets to this point over here she she's speeding up a little bit when she's getting over here she is still a little bit speeding up you can see that the slope of these lines is essentially changing and increasing so she starts at a at a at a at a, at a low velocity and then increases the velocity over time until she gets to the end of the race right and uh, you can see that somewhere over here their velocities somewhere over here you can see that the slope of this line and the slope of this line is the same right which means that basically uh, which means that basically at at some point at, at about 11 12 seconds or so they have the exact same velocities but then before 12 seconds runner b had a had a lower velocity and after 12 seconds runner b had a higher velocity than than runner a but then runner a has maintained the same velocity throughout the whole race right so that that's essentially how they how these these two people run the race okay so now the the second part of this the second part of this is at what time is the distance between the two runners between the runners is the greatest so you can see that at this point they are at the exact same point as zero at zero meters meaning that they are at the start point which means that the distance between them is zero and then as they move essentially as time goes on this distance is increasing meaning that this first you have this distance that then you have this distance and then you have this distance somewhere over here the distance seems to be the greatest and then as uh, and then as runner b essentially and as as we get essentially closer and closer to these points runner b is increasing her velocity as as she is increasing her velocity then essentially she is making up for the for the difference in the distance and so then you can see that essentially the distance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually at 13 seconds they come come back essentially to the same to the same point which is essentially 100 meters along the along the road whatever that that might be in, in that particular race and and basically at what time do they have the same velocity 
So the same velocity essentially this is something that that needs to that, that you need to understand clearly for these graphs. You see over here the the rate of change of position versus time is velocity, right? The rate of change of position versus time is uh, is is the rate of change of position with respect to time is velocity. Now for runner A for runner A essentially what you can what you can argue is that basically of course that the rate of change of position versus time would be the slope of this line, right? And the slope of this line, we are assuming that this line is a straight line and the slope is not changing. So that means that it has the exact same slope all throughout the, the race, meaning from 0 seconds all the way up to 13 seconds, right? But since runner B is changing her velocity, you see over here basically the tangent line essentially is has essentially has some slope like this. At this point, the tangent line has some slope like this. At this point, the tangent line has some slope like this, and so on and so forth, right? So she is um, increasing her velocity as she goes along. But then somewhere over here, but then somewhere over here, as you can see, the their velocity becomes give or take the same at some point over here. Meaning at, at some point at about eight, nine seconds, their velocity becomes the same, but then runner B has to keep increasing her velocity so as to uh, close the gap between them and then eventually at at uh, 13 seconds they will uh, both essentially are they are both at 100 meters along the along the along the race road whatever that is right okay so that's that's basically question number 12. okay so question number 13 is if a ball if a ball is thrown into the air is thrown into the air at with a velocity of with a velocity of of 40 feet per second its height in feet its height in feet after t seconds after t seconds is given by is given by y is equal to 40 times t minus 16 times t squared find the velocity find the velocity when basically when t is equal to 2 so the ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second meaning the initial velocity of this ball is 40 40 feet per second and the um, basically the the height in feet after t seconds is given by this equation or essentially this function, if you graph this function, if you call it y is equal to 40 times x minus 16 times x squared, you can see that, well, the, at, at t is equal to 0, the height is 0. So this is the height of the ball, and this is essentially time going by. So as time is going by, the height, the, the height of the ball is increasing. It goes all the way up to 25 feet. And then at 25 feet, the, the ball will basically will, will come back towards the surface of the earth. And then at, um, at t is equal to 2.5 seconds, um, it uh, basically it hits the ground, right? 
which which essentially means that um, which essentially means that the ball essentially it remains in 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 the air essentially for two two point five seconds the maximum height becomes twenty five feet and then at at two point five seconds it eventually hits the ground right now what's 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 again what's what's given in this problem is that is that basically it's um, it's thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second which you can see over here meaning that if you draw a a um, a line essentially so since this is essentially position versus time of this of this ball the slope of the line at any point is the is the is the instantaneous velocity of the of the ball right which means that at time t is equal to zero if i draw a line essentially tangent to the graph of this function which that would be essentially y is equal to x essentially and call it y is equal to m times x and do a slider for m and then zoom in on this point you can see that if I set the value of m to 40 the line becomes exactly tangent to the graph of the function exactly at this point you can see very clearly that the line is tangent to the graph of the function meaning that at, at t is equal to zero you don't even see the the graph of the function you see only the tangent line which is the blue line over here right which essentially explains the, the initial velocity of the of the ball right so and then at t is equal to two seconds basically you want to know what is the velocity of the ball at t is equal to two seconds which is basically um two seconds over here so you can you can just simply calculate it using this calculator as well meaning that you could say that for example at t is equal to two seconds basically the the um, um, you can draw a, a line tangent to the graph of the function if i call this f of x for example if i call this f of x and calculate f of two it's equal to 16 right 2 comma 16 would be a point on the line 2 comma 16 would be a point on the line which is which must be this point over here this point over here and you can see that at t is equal to 2 seconds of course the ball is coming back towards the ground meaning that the velocity should be essentially uh, a negative value and of course the tangent to the graph of the this function would have a negative value as well now if i draw a line tangent that that goes through this point that would be y minus y minus y1 which is 16 is equal to m times m times basically x minus x1 which is equal to 2 at this point right and do a slider for m and then I need to basically take this this slope and set the slope in such a way that this line becomes tangent to the graph of the function at this point and then the slope of the line becomes the instantaneous velocity of the ball at this at this point at t is equal to two seconds so if I increase or decrease essentially the value over here you can see that at some value like for example um, I have to change this essentially I have to go from for example negative um, negative negative 25 to negative 10 to negative 10 for example and you can see that as I decrease the as I decrease the the slope at some point over here I wish I could let me let me do a different color for this unfortunately I can't if I 
take this out of here and now the color is different do I have to go a little bit further negative 35 for example to negative 25 and you can see that somewhere over here this is way too much but but somewhere over here which is at negative 25 give or take um, at negative 25 the the line becomes tangent to the graph of the function now since the slope of this line is negative 25 that means that the instantaneous velocity of the ball at at t is equal to two seconds is going to be negative 25 feet per second right now let's calculate that so the 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 the, 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 the instantaneous velocity at two seconds must be somewhere somewhere very close to negative 25 right so to calculate this you want to uh, uh, basically you want to calculate the derivative of this function if you call this basic f of x basically 40 times x minus 16 times for example or call it for example f of t Call it f of t is equal to 40 times t minus 16 times, for example, t squared, right? And you want to calculate f prime of f prime of basically um, 2, right? f prime of 2. So you know that f prime of a is can be calculated as the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches as h approaches zero right which tells us that basically that f prime of two can be can can be calculated as the limit of f of basically two plus h minus f of two over h as h approaches zero right And then you can calculate basically, for example, f of two plus h bases based based on this this relationship over here. So f of two plus h would be the same thing as forty times basically two plus h minus sixteen times two plus h whole squared, which would be eighty times eighty plus forty times h minus sixteen times, and this would be. 2 squared is equal to 4 plus h squared plus 4 times h. And this would be the same thing as 80 plus 40 times h minus 16 times 4 is equal to 64 plus minus 60 times minus 16 times h squared. 4 times 16 is equal to 64, so that's negative 64 times h. So you can write this as negative 16 times h squared. Negative 64 times h plus 40 times h is got negative 24 times h. Uh, and we have calculated this as well. 80 minus 64 is the same thing as uh, 16 mm, plus 16, right? So this is f of 2 plus h. And f of 2, f of, essentially f of 2 would be the same thing as, would be the same thing as based on this would be 40 times 2 is equal to 80 minus 16 times, 16 times 2 squared is equal to 4, which is the same thing as 80 minus 64, which is the same thing as, um, uh, 80 minus 64 is the same thing as, um, 2016 right so then you can write this as the limit of basic f of 2 plus h which is negative 16 times h squared minus 24 times h plus 16 minus f of 2 which is minus 16 
over h as h approaches zero these two you can cancel out and then you can you can write this as the limit of write this as a basically as h taken h out negative 16 times h minus 24 over h as h approaches zero and then you can cancel these two out as h approaches zero this becomes negative 24 which means that the which means that basically that the um that 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 that, that essentially this is the the, the instantaneous This is the instantaneous velocity of the ball of the ball at t is equal to two seconds is equal to is equal to negative twenty four feet per second. Negative twenty four feet per second. Now, of course, we can we can test this idea as well, <coughs> meaning that uh, the function that we had was basically 40 times t minus 16 times t squared. Let's take a look at this function as well. Now, the way that you can that you can see that essentially using decimals, for example, is that the same function 40 times t minus 16 times t squared is essentially this function over here right now the the function that we have if i first of all if i set this to um if i set this to negative 24 this should be essentially this the the, the correct slope for the line right moreover i can calculate the essentially desmos itself it can calculate the derivative of this function for you meaning that you can say that basically calculate f prime of f prime of x for us and then it gives you basically a it gives you another function as you can see it gives you basically this function over here which is basically this a straight line I'm going to gives you this a straight line and this a straight line essentially what what this what the meaning of this a straight line is is that for example at at this point for example you can see that the at at t is equal to for example 1.25 um, there is that essentially there is that the function essentially comes to a maximum right and then it changes its direction and then keeps essentially then it, it starts decreasing which means that the function at this point is not changing right the rate of change of the function at this point is equal to zero and since the rate of change at this point is equal to zero you can see that the that the output of the of the derivative function which is this function over here at this point is equal to zero meaning that the rate of change at this point is equal to zero at 1.25 the, the the output of this function is equal to zero at two at t is equal to two you can see that the output of this function is exactly negative 24 which means that the which means that the value of the derivative of the main function at t is equal to 2 is equal to negative 24 which means that the instantaneous velocity of the ball at t is equal to 2 seconds is negative 24 feet per second right so you can of course we will get to these to to the derivative um we will define essentially the derivative as a function and then we will see essentially we will um, uh, work with this form of the derivative as a as a complete function not just calculating the derivative for each point and keep going and and again calculating for the next one for the next one you can as you can see you can take essentially your um you can essentially you have a original fun an original function which is essentially this function over here 
for this function you can calculate the derivative which is this straight line it you can calculate the you can essentially find the algebraic uh, relationship for this function as well and then for different values of x you will be able to calculate the, the value of this function that essentially becomes uh, the, the derivative function and meaning the derivative as a function we will see about we will, we will work with these as we go along okay so this was question number 13 in the next video we will talk about the next uh, question thank you